What's up guys? My name's Adam. Welcome back to Driven Productions. Have my good friend Chris here, Mr. Rembolt. How are you, sir? Doing great. It's good, good to, to be you, here, man. man great to be here. On your channel. Second video uh, in the new Driven HQ here, so really excited. We are working on sound dampening and sound paneling and things like that. We got blinds up this week as well, so it's getting better. Still have a little bit to do on lighting, but I think this looks pretty good right now. So uh, really happy to have you here. Now, what are we talking about today? Okay. Chris and I have been driving Teslas for what? This is probably four years now? I think I was 2019. 2020. Okay, you're 2020, yeah. I'm 2019. We both started with a Model X and we both started with P100Ds. We just went, hey, screw it. Let's just, let's just get the one we really want, right? And I recently, literally yesterday, just bought my second Model X and that is this ultra red long range Model X that is sitting right here. So we thought we would get together and kind of talk a little bit about our experiences with the vehicles thus far, what we like, maybe what we also dislike. I've got some definite opinions on that. Now I did shoot a first week with my Model X, if you recall, right? And that one has like 150,000 plus views. You guys love that video. It's just a really honest first week with the car. And then I did a second, and I'll put a link right here to it, with just 50,000 miles later. So kind of what went right, what went wrong with the car. Now we still have my Model X, and Chris obviously still has his Model X. How many miles do you have on this thing now? About 91,000. 91,000, it's funny, I have 92,000 on mine. So we've, we've definitely loved driving and put the miles on it. But I also did wanna talk about in this video why I bought this vehicle, a little bit about what makes this new Gen 2, uh, which is, it is a refreshed version of the Model X in quite a few ways. So we're gonna talk and, and kinda of compare and contrast it. So that's what this video is about. If you're looking to buy a new Model X, whether it's a Plaid or a Long Range, I think you're gonna get some value out of this. And also, if you're looking to know what it's been like to own a vehicle like a Model X, the the Fabergé egg of vehicles, as Elon Musk puts it, and you're curious, you know, what's gone right and wrong with your car, how tire wear has been, battery degradation, things like that. We're gonna cover it in this video, so let's get started. All right, first of all, let's start off with some comparing between a 2016 Model X P100D and the newer version. This is, of course, the long range dual motor version. Now, guys, this is a really, really good looking car. In fact, I actually think in many ways, I prefer the styling of the 16, 17, 18 P100Ds, 90Ds, etc. I like this. I just like the way this looks. I think it's very sporty. Obviously, they restyled this a long time ago. I just liked everything about this front end. I love the lights. And in many ways, this looks good too with the new restyled front end. And there's not many differences, frankly, but the differences are right here, okay? The way they restyled this. It does look a little bit more sleek. Otherwise, very, very similar. Now, this does come with blacked out trim and silver or you know, basically chrome in a lot of the lettering. So in the back, it'll say Tesla in chrome, whereas everything else is a more blacked out look, right? All of your trim here. That's another thing different with these versions of the cars. You can see this is all chrome and it also carries through here. Now, the biggest difference is build quality. So, <laughs> Chris and I were just laughing about this, right? First thing I said to him, right? And if you're a Tesla fan, you know the Tesla build quality is literally hit or miss, right? You go when you look at a used 15, 16, 17, et cetera, I'm telling you the body panels are gonna be hit or miss. Some cars are okay, some cars are not. I will tell you, these cars were pretty much hand built back in the day. So look out for things like this lining up, look out for consistencies in the panel gaps as you move through the entire vehicle. This car is exceptionally good, I gotta say. I mean, it's not exactly Porsche level quality, but it is, it, like, honestly, I was looking at it yesterday. I mean, it looked great. This car, <laughs> Chris will come on camera here in a second and show you some of the things about it, but these older versions of the car for sure look like they were kind of hand assembled, right? So these things, like this one's pretty good actually, overall body lines, but what you really do want to look for is especially up front here. Like it almost looks like sometimes it's in an accident. My Model S, which we still have, Chris's car I think is actually exceptionally good. Um, some of them were fine, you know, it's just when they were assembled in the factory, guy was having a better day than, the, than, than Tuesday instead of Thursday, or I don't know, right? But it just goes to tell you that this was a $160,000 car back in 2016. I paid 161, where that my guy, 
whoever bought it first paid 161,000. Of course, I only paid 70 a couple of years later. So it depreciated like crazy. Now that brings me to the second point. So if you buy this car today, it's only 79,990. I know you're like $80,000, it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, okay? But they've cut the price on this twice. When, the, when this new body style came out, this was $115,000. So they've dropped it significantly. Now, if you wanted a plaid when this just came out, they were asking close to 140. And if you start, you know, I think it was like 134 or something. And then if you start putting in FSD, which at the time was 15 grand, ultra red was $3,000. You could have easily spent $150,000 similar to that, mind you. So these were, these have really come down. Now the cool part about that is at $79,990, this qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit. So that comes next year when I file my taxes, I will go ahead and be able to qualify for the full amount, which is really, really cool. Nice. Part about next year is it can be applied directly to your lease payment when you take purchase of the vehicle, or it can be used as a deposit or towards taxes or whatever. Overall for $80,000, I think this is a lot of value, which is why I bought it, okay? I was not gonna buy a new car this year. Rates are tough, you name it, right? So, not only do you get the tax credit, not only do you get to potentially do a, a business write-off, because this is my business vehicle, right? I drive it to all my client meetings and whatnot, but this is also a car that has a lot more range than that one. So this has a range, guys, of about 330 miles. And I do air quotes because Chris and I will tell you, if you are fully charged it to 330 miles of range, you run the AC, you do 80 on the highway, you're not gonna get 330 miles of range. But this one is a lot more accurate than that one was. Couple of reasons why. One, this has a 22 inch wheel. Guys, the number one thing that I will tell you is these wheels, these turbine wheels, they look awesome. Chris and I both have them on our old Model X, right? And I still have that car right over there if you wanna see it. But they suck when it comes to road feeling because they will transfer a lot more road noise, potholes, you name it. And also they tend to wear and chew through tires way faster than if you go with the 20 inch wheels. So that's why I specifically went with these wheels. Now, the reality is if I wanted to get the tax credit, I wasn't able to spec the larger wheels because if I were to put the six seat configuration, if I were to do seven seats or anything else, it would have pushed me over that $80,000 tax credit threshold. So I was kind of limited, but it was very nice that Tesla did not charge me $3,000 for that paint. But going back to range, this car has a significant, significantly, I mean guys, it's like 100 plus miles more than that vehicle ever got. When I got my Model X with 20 something thousand miles, I was lucky, lucky to get 240 miles of range, even though it was rated for 280. It's just the nature of that being a performance car, the 22 inch wheels, et cetera. This one though, I think is significantly better for road trips. I think it'll charge a little bit faster too. It has all the new modern technology. Now the last incentive, I should say this on camera, the last incentive was that Tesla agreed to transfer my full self-driving software from my Model S to this vehicle as long as I accept the delivery of this vehicle by the end of the year. And since I did that, this is late December now, right? That was a $12,000 upgrade. No cost ultra red. This is by far the best color that Tesla has ever made. This is a very, very difficult color to produce. One of the best reds I've ever seen. Sitting in this garage, it looks dark. Move it outside, it looks light. It's got a great metallic flake in it. I just think it's a fantastic color, but it was no charge. So that's $3,000 in savings. They moved over my $12,000 FSD. That's $12,000 I didn't have to invest. And I got a $7,500 tax credit. Beyond that, these 20 inch wheels, much more comfortable. And I'm gonna talk a little bit now as a next clip about the interior so you can kind of get an idea of what they've changed there. And I'm actually gonna let Chris talk a little bit about his interior and his car in general, just any thoughts he wants, cause you've heard enough from me. And then we'll also compare and contrast the interior of this one. So let's get into that clip. All right, Chris, I've done enough talking for one day here. So uh, what do you think, man, just overall about your Model X uh, before we get into the interior? So I have put about 70,000 miles on this car since I bought it. I bought it with uh, 11, 12,000 miles. And it's a 2018. It has full self-driving beta and the new computer. It's got all the electronic upgrades available for my model year. And I have taken this on huge road trips from Nashville down to Austin a couple of times to go to a couple of Tesla events, as well as I've been to the SpaceX 
factory in Brownsville, Texas, almost in Mexico. So this has seen some heavy, heavy mileage. I've taken it on several other family road trips, etc. And it is kind of a pain to have a little bit lower range. Yes, but it's not as big of a pain as you would think. This is probably one of the worst range Teslas that you could have other than the original Roadster. Um, I get maybe two hours of driving before I have to spend probably 30, 40 minutes at a charger and then get another hour and a half down the road. So I end up spending probably about 15% longer than it would take for a gas car to go somewhere. But uh, it's definitely worth the, um, the performance that you get. It's so crazy to be able to go zero to 60 in under three seconds with this car. Oh man, this thing pulls so hard. Jesus. And be able to carry six people, um, go on long road trips, have it drive itself. I think this is, all things considered, the best car in the world right now until I can get my Cybertruck, which uh, hopefully should come early next year. Let me show you a few differences with this 2018 versus Adam's 2023 uh, beautiful red Model X. This one again is the P100D, so it's the high performance one, and you have to hold the button down to open this door. Listen to this beep. Yeah, talk about the doors, because I know that this is probably the number one comment we get that people get the doors are kind of a pain. The doors, my wife honestly is a little embarrassed to open them in the parking lot, but I really like opening them and it is really cool. I suppose, I don't have any kids yet, but I suppose if you did, it would be really nice to be able to set them down in the car seat here without contorting yourself like this. That's the reason the doors open up. Um, Elon, of course, has a bunch of kids and he was like, it should be super easy to put your kids in the car seat. Uh, and it would be awesome if the doors opened up. So. Um, you would think that this was a problem in a parking garage or next to a car real close, but it's super smart. It has never bumped into anything. But as you saw, we had to hold the button down for it to open all the way. You can change that in the settings, but I have it in the paranoid settings just in case. <laughs> Check this out. It has the center console and the captain's chairs here. I believe this was a $6,000 option. It's actually very easy to get in the back here and a full-size adult such as myself does fit back here quite easily. So, from here now, but that sound there, man, I don't know what that is. Um, sometimes you just get some squeaks, beeps, and rattles with the Tesla, but uh, you, also, you also have an amazing charging network, and uh, maybe I shouldn't cope this hard, but this is still the best car out of 14 vehicles that I have owned. Yeah, and this is so rare, guys, right here. This center console is an upgrade you rarely find on yeah. any car, especially a Model X so, or a e Model X. Yeah, I wanted my backseat passengers to have a premium experience. And again, <laughs> as I don't have kids yet, this, this doesn't really matter to me as much just because I'm going to have mostly adults in these seats. But the amount of stuff you can fit in here is incredible. The rear seats fold down, there's a bunch of storage under the back, and I will say though, I have actually camped in this car a little bit. Um, sometimes you're on a long, long road trip to see SpaceX in Mexico and you need to take a nap at a supercharger. Folding these seats down and curling up in the back is possible, but if you're gonna camp in a Tesla and it does have a camp mode, Adam's configuration will be much better where you can fold down all the seats and you can actually stretch out in it. That's one thing I'm really looking forward to with the Cybertruck is just how much of a good camping vehicle it actually will be. What about um, any issues? Issues, I have had my first, I've actually had two mechanical replacements on this vehicle so far. First one was covered under warranty and it was the front half shafts. There are two shafts that go from the motor here in the middle to the wheel out here and this angle here between it, it, it wears it out. And it's just mechanically difficult to do that, I guess, in the way that they engineered it. Yes, yes, it's an extremely powerful vehicle, and it is a lot of uh, a lot of newtons of momentum. But um, that was replaced under warranty, and you know it's time to do that when it starts rattling. And that actually set off a cascade of things that I did with this, because you can set the suspension to always be low. This is in low setting right now, but when you do that with a performance SUV, let's say this tire here. Let's say we're looking at it from the back. 
they angle them outwards like this. They angle them outwards. And so the part of the tire that touches the ground is not the whole tire most of the time. And that's to prevent it from rolling over as easy. And that's not that much of a concern with Model X because most of the weight's in the battery and that's very low, but it's just like that by default. And so my first set of tires actually wore very, very poorly on the inside of the back of your tires. If you drive a Model X, go look at your rear tires in the inside of the portion where it touches the ground, especially a performance one, you will notice that it is a lot more worn than the rest of the vehicle. There is a cure for this though. And so I got the unplugged performance camber links that take that tire from being angled out like this, like, like this, and actually makes it more vertical like this, and it wears it much more evenly. And I got 52,000 miles on my set of Pirelli's. And Adam still doesn't believe me. I have the receipts to prove it, I don't. but I got 52,000 miles. Guys. Never more than 20. Still had life left in them too, so it was a preemptive uh, changing of the tires. But that's because of the unplugged performance camber links. Um, they're not sponsoring this or me or anything. I just am a big believer in how good of a change that was. It was about $1,700 installed by my local shop. Not cheap. Not cheap. It's about a whole set of tires, but I also got essentially another whole set of tires of life out of that set of tires. So um, that was that. And I can keep it in low all the time, which extends the life of the front half shafts. So the other mechanical replacement I had was two weeks ago. It was the battery heater. Um, apparently there's a heater in the battery that warms it up to make it uh, operate at a more optimal temperature for battery life. So your battery can last 300, 400,000 miles. It operates at a specific temperature. There's a little heater in there that makes sure that it cools and heats and kind of stays in the temperature range. Mine died and it set off a Christmas tree of alarms on the uh, screen. Um, we were getting ready to leave to go to the gym and uh, we just plugged the charger back in and unplugged it and it allowed us to drive afterwards. But uh, Tesla did a remote diagnosis of my vehicle and said, yeah, your battery heater is dead. That was a $1,300 replacement, uh, including labor. So um, I've seen actually a couple of people get their battery heaters replaced. It's, it's just something that's gonna wear out. It has a lot of temperature range to it. It does a lot of work. And sometimes you'll have to get that replaced. But- Is the car outside, was it cold? No, I keep it in the garage. Uh, but it was a very cold morning. I think it was 20 some degrees that morning. And we had done preheat cabin, which also preheats the battery. And I guess that had something to do with it. But it's not something you should be paranoid about. It's not like, it's not like one of the AMG engines that's gonna blow up on you randomly that we're in the mid 2000s. This is something that is just a wear part occasionally on a few vehicles. I only know of two people uh, in the Tesla community that have had it replaced. And I know just a ton of Tesla owners just cause I'm in the local group. But other than that, it's been about one set of tires, got some wipers, windshield wipers, put fluid in it. And I save about $2,000, $3,000 a year in gasoline. Um, this this car has been incredible. Yeah, and you're also not changing your brakes. Yeah, exactly. Plugs, air filters, oil changes, none of it. So $1,300 in the course of three years in maintenance and $1,700 in a upgrade to perform, to make my tires perform a little better and last longer. Um, not bad for a car that is zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds and uh, can drive itself. It, it feels like the future. And again, these were hand built. They were getting this right. They're still, they were still ironing some things out with this vehicle. Adams will probably lot, uh, age much better and have fewer rattles and squeaks and squeals and stuff like that. They're, they're a very young car company still on the scheme of things, but I can't wait for the Cybertruck. That is, um, I think the coolest vehicle in the world now. I bought this when it was the coolest vehicle in the world to me. And uh, we'll do a video with the Cybertruck as soon as it comes in. It should hopefully be here sometime February or March. Excellent job, Chris. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing about some of the issues he's had, which really hasn't been many. And 
I'll put a link here to my 50,000 review video on my Model X, that was 50,000 miles later. Mine had a few different issues. I also had a side swipe I had to deal with by a complete and drunken idiot. Uh, well, I shouldn't say drunken, he just has so many pills in him he couldn't even drive, which, you know, welcome to the wonderful world we live in. But this is a, a, an overview section now of our video of the differences between, you know, I've gone over the exterior, but now I wanna cover the interior. Now this is a five seat configuration. Now why that's good is these seats lay all the way down. Now you do have to adjust these up just a smidge if you wanna put them all the way down, but that gives you a lot more room. So Chris was talking about camping. This is, well, this is frankly enough space for me to now lay down in. I don't know about comfortably, but I think I could put a small mattress in here and probably spend a night if I had to. So if you're talking about moving things, this now becomes the, the best SUV crossover that's so popular, right? Whereas the six seat configuration or the seven seat configuration will not give you that kind of lay down capability. Those seats, they're great, but they can be really annoying, frankly, too, because if you do have large items, they don't really move that far up. You get maybe a foot or two, but they don't lay flat. So keep that in mind. Now, outside of that, the interior has been redone in the second gen. And in a lot of ways, guys, it is a nicer vehicle. I'm telling you, it just, it just feels a little bit more premium in here, a little bit more Porsche. Okay. Well, what I mean by that is when you sit in the vehicle, just from hello, it smells like a new car, which is nice, but everything is just laid out in a more modern new way. You have a new screen here. You have all of this extra storage that you didn't get in his version of the car. You also have USB charging here for your phones. And it's just, I like how everything is so multifunctional. You can put something here and then hide it. You can have your cup holders here and then hide it when you don't need it. That's very, very cool. And I just really like they kept the same space cockpit, right? With the open glass pan panoramic windshield, right? And overall guys, it just feels good. Now, steering wheel. Some of you guys have mentioned this before, but on the Plaid, it had the yoke steering wheel. You can get this, the yoke steering wheel as an option now for $1,000. Now remember, I was maxed out with my tax credit, so I couldn't do anything. I couldn't change the color of the seats, I couldn't change anything except for the color, because it was free. If I had added the wheels or the yoke steering, I would have been over that. And of course, that would have cost me 7,500 bucks, so I opted not to do it. But now they have had this nice circular wheel, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. But the difference is, there's no turn stocks. There's no FSD stock like his has. So that's taken me some getting used to. If I want to go ahead and do, turn it, it's all just haptic feedback now. Everything else for the most part is similar. You can still adjust, you can still talk to the Tesla through the, through the steering wheel, but, uh, and, and frankly, the design of the steering wheel is, is not as good as the last one. It looked a little bit better in the Model X, but overall, guys, I'm not unhappy with it. Now, this new screen, instead of it being this way, is now, you know, landscape. And again, it's decent. Um, I do like that you can tilt and you can adjust the screen which is kind of cool. So if you want to make it middle, you can. If you want to make it so that, let's say you're uh, watching a movie and you're at a supercharger and your kid's sitting here, he can just focus on it. He could play a game. You still have all of the fun things. You know, you have the ability to watch, you know, Disney Plus and all this fun stuff. Now, what's really neat about this, guys, is that there is now a middle screen. So when you're in Disney, for example, and you've logged in and you wanna go ahead and watch a movie, okay? It will actually play now in the back screen while you're driving, which is very, very cool because I have a couple of kids. So when we go on our road trips, that's gonna pay huge dividends because then we can all watch a movie and obviously I can't watch it in the front screen, they don't allow that, but you can continue to play a movie in the back screen as you drive. Otherwise, you get a ton of different video games and fun things that they built into the car. You know, the arcade mode here. I mean, look how many games it comes with now. And it's just getting better and better. And you even have Steam integration. So you could probably play a lot more video games uh, through that than you can with this, the ones that are built in. But it's, it's just a very cool experience to have all of this stuff built in. You still get the toy box. You can customize the color of your car. You can do boom box mode, which is literally as it sounds, right? You could have it fart when you, uh, when you do things and, and, and the kids just think that's just the funniest thing ever. 
<laughs> you, could, you got things like light show, which, you know, dances on the outside. Like I said, the emissions, I, I can't even tell you how many times we have laughed, you know, with these types of features, right? I mean, I tell you what, I got a six and an eight year old. You, you, you put this on, I mean, <laughs> like the one that gets us every time, uh, they used to call it, um, oh God, what's it? Oh, uh, they got rid of the tweet fart. Oh, it was the funniest thing. It'd be a fart sound and then a, and like a, like a tweeting sound. <laughs> I guess they've gotten rid of it, but you know, Falcon heavy, uh, <laughs> Nura stank. I haven't even heard that version yet. Oh yeah, that, that's a good one. So this will, this is just fun things that make the vehicle as you really dive into it and, and, and kind of get used to the interior is so much. There's so much that this will allow you to do. Like when I got the vehicle yesterday, I forgot, you know, I had to set up how I like it. So right now I'm just driving in sport mode. You know, insane mode is, is literally insane. I and mean, we'll take a quick POV drive just to show you, but it's 3.8 seconds, 3.8 seconds to 60. I mean, so even though this is the long range and not the plaid, 3.8 to 60 is like supercar territory, guys. It's fast, trust me. It'll, it'll like, you'll be like, people will drive with you be like, oh my God, this car is not the plaid version because it is still ridiculously fast. There's a ton of torque. And then everything else you can do, customizing the suspension. This is all kind of new in the car, right? Now you can actually do like advanced mode where you can set ride comfort and handling up, dampening mode, autopilot. I had to go ahead and enable the FSD. I had to let it configure itself, which took, you know, 20, 30 miles, right? There's all these little things that you can dial in of exactly how you want your Tesla to be. And, I, and again, I like that. Now, if you're not a tech person, you're gonna find this all to be very overwhelming, I think. Uh, I, I know I'm still, like I was trying to figure out how to make my home, my, my home address right in here so that it wouldn't lock. And you know, Chris and I were trying to figure it out because every time he would walk, you know, two minutes away from the car, two seconds away from the car, it would lock itself and we're in my garage. And I'm like, come on, I don't want that to, to happen. So I think we figured it out, but it took three or four different, you know, button switches to make that a reality. So just keep that in mind. Um, overall though, the sound system's fantastic. They kept it. His sound system's fantastic. It's audible, the acoustics. It, it just sounds incredible in here. Like this car is so quiet. So when you're taking road trips, if you're an audible guy, audio, audiophile guy, right, you're gonna love the sound system. And overall, this version of the car feels like a more premium experience than my 16 Model S or my 16 P100D. I, I, I just think it really does. They've restyled just overall the doors and then they have multiple mix of materials, multiple mix of materials just feels like a nice premium place. And if you didn't know, Chris, come over and show this. People always ask me, how do you deal with this windshield if there's a sun glare? Well, that right there clips in, and then you grab this, and that comes down. And there you go. And, it, and if it's the sun's in your face on this side, you can do the same thing by bringing it down. So this, this does allow you to get a lot of that, because sometimes, you know, this glass window can be a little annoying. You know, if you're driving home and it's like, you know, golden hour, or you have an hour and a half of sun in your face, that allows you to get rid of it. Um, but overall guys, I'm very happy with this new interior. Uh, it just feels really quality. There was zero rattling when I drove it home yesterday. The tires are so much more quiet than my uh, 22s and that P100D. And overall, I think this new interior is fantastic. You know, we thought it'd be fun guys to do a POV drive here to have Chris drive my car and then I'll drive the P100D and just kind of give our general first impressions here. So we're gonna do that for you right now. All right, so. Let's this go. is different, right? Yeah, this is totally different. So swipe up and then here's my turn signals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I have a phantom limb for the stock right here. <laughs> phantom limb. All right. Take it right here. I Let's love go. it. Phantom limb. That's funny. I don't hate Phantom stock. <laughs> I don't hate the uh, the turn signal control as much as some people do. So we have this in insane mode, um, which is one of the speed controls on here. It's mm -hmm. up in here under pedals and steering, we're in insane. And uh, that means that we get the best out of the electronic speed controller in the car here. And it does, uh, man, it feels more refined than 2018. Five, five years makes a big difference. Um, and I know this has 20 inch, 20 inch wheels, so that will absorb some of the sound. My 22s are gonna be more rubber on the road, less rubber between the wheel and the road, so it will be a little bit noisier. Um, so how quiet though it is in here. Yeah, it is markedly quieter in here. Oh my God. Yeah, it's it's definitely got some good pull Jeez. at speed. 
it gives it to you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the long range is this good. I had a loner Model X 70D that was a, probably a 2017 while my battery heater was getting replaced, and that car felt slow compared to mine. This one does not. No, it, it feels like the Plaid is just downgraded a little bit. It, like, it feels like the same motor, though. It really feels strong in the uh, acceleration through the... Um, like we're at what like 50 miles an hour right now yeah oh that feels God. as good as mine from 50. that's 70 though that's two seconds yeah that that's the butt strong. dyno feels good real that's good really strong like the plaid is just ridiculous right it's i haven't driven fast. the plaid yet mine's the p100d which is the generation before the plaid i have the ludicrous plus so we'll turn on the uh extra battery heating to get the most yeah. out of i don't have controller. it in drag strip mode that actually gives you more but it takes 21 minutes to condition the battery yeah, it depends on the temperature you start from. Probably wouldn't be too bad now, but um, yeah, we'll do a launch on this. Mm. Power feels so good, though. Dude, this is an incredible car. They have definitely improved the Model X in the past five years. The tech just keeps getting better. Tesla doesn't have standard model year releases. They just improve the car as they find ways to do it. So it's a constant incremental improvement. And doing that over five years, you can really tell the difference. We're going to do a little launch for you guys. This is like the middle of nowhere road, but uh, here we go. Oh, man, that thing feels super strong. Jeez, it just keeps pulling. That is strong. That is so strong. So we hit a uh, certain number um, <laughs> that's 10 miles more than the usually measured number. And that was not that different from what mine does. And mine is mine's going to be faster, you'll see. Um, it, it's more of a neck snap for sure, but it's this is a very, very good car. This well, that's the thing. Incredible. You get 330 miles of range, and you can still get a 3.8 to 60. So yeah. at that point, you're asking yourself, do I really need to have another the, one second or a, yeah, one and a half you second? You can feel the difference. You can, but, but at that point, it just makes you sick. Yeah, I can't do that with my wife in the car. I it's, can't do it with anybody in the car. Yeah. Like my mother-in-law literally like gets viscerally upset with me when I even put half half throttle you know yeah we can't be doing that uh, with other people in the car it's very much a driver's feature to have that much acceleration let's do this oh my god that's so <laughs> flipping insane Woo! I think it's got plenty of torque plenty of power and I would absolutely and this is coming from the enthusiast point of view if it's a daily driver which this one is for work I would 100% recommend you get the long range. I don't see why you would get a Plaid. This is plenty fast, like unbelievably fast still. And I just don't I just don't see why you would invest the money. Yeah, me either. You know, it should be mindful to talk about the the air conditioning controls. There there is no physical, you know, vents in this new design, and so if you want to adjust it, it you you really do it through this. And eh, this is a feature I would actually leave uh, as it was. I like the ability to just have my own controls here. Um, it also looks like there's a protective screen I need to pull off here as well. So I've, I've pulled off all of them except for this one. But that's kind of a, I don't know, it's a little bit of a, a gimmick. But overall, the HVAC system in this car is so far fantastic. And I, and I really Yeah, this is insanely excellent. So, so Chris approves. Yes. All right. Let's jump in that 18 P100D. And fun this, fact. See what this, I think. Fun fact. This car knew was less than mine was used. So I, I spent about 84 to buy mine when it was uh, in 2020 into 2018. So it's a couple years old with 12,000 miles. P100D, obviously. But this at 79 is an excellent deal. You get, you get a lot of car. Well, yeah, but you also got what sixty grand off yours, so yeah, you know. yeah. more actually. It was yeah. one sixty new. There you go. So you know, pros and cons. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I'm I'm happy with the purchase. I don't have any buyer's regret, and I know Tesla's one of those cars that the more you enjoy it, and the more you drive it, the more you kind of be, learn to like it. Uh, it's people say they don't have soul. Trust me, like as a utility, as a tool, it's just wonderful to have it in your life. Um, yeah, I think I think Chris would agree. Especially when you get used to FSD, because comfort creep, 
you know, guys, there's a there's a great book by Michael Easter called The Comfort Crisis. I've, I, me and Chris both have read it. Yeah, it's good. Like, once you have FSD, it's kind of like having HVAC in your house or having comfortable tennis shoes. You, you just don't ever go back to not having that. Yeah, I hate driving other cars now. I am very spoiled driving the Model X. Me too. Like, I literally won't... I mean, I don't even like driving most of the enthusiast cars anymore, especially on long distances, because I'm like, oh, I got a 50-mile drive here that I have to actually pay attention. You know? Oh, yeah. And it's not like I'm not paying attention, to be frank, but this is so good that you really can... I mean, you still are spatially aware and, you know, keeping keeping track with the steering and stuff from time to time, but at the end of the day, you can relax. Yeah. Supercar speeds, personal driver automatic... Prius cost to operate or less. I mean, what else is there that does this? I mean, that's why they're the most valuable car company on the planet. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's still worth $800 billion. I mean, let's, let's drive the white one. All right. Well, I can tell you from hello, just shutting the door, you feel the quality difference between the new one and this one. I am actually a fan of the turnstocks. I kind of wish they still had them. I don't know. Like he 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 kind of made that joke, but it's true. Like they're they're nice to have. You know, there's certain things in cars that you know, like turn signals and stuff. I don't necessarily think if it ain't broken, don't fix it. It's like why they tried to get rid of the circular steering wheel for a yoke. I never really got that. And the main reason why I didn't like the yoke is very simple, guys. I like to use my knee from time to time. You know, I might be making a turn and I got something in my hand. So you can use your knee with the yoke. It's very hard to do that. There's just a flat bottom and it comes significantly higher than a circular wheel does. So um, from, from hello here as well, you can just hear it. The tire noise, being 22s, is significantly more. You hear a little bit more wind, sounds like, on the glass. And then just in general, you know, when you when you kind of move around the seat and stuff, you, you kind of hear a little bit of audible creaking. Chris's is actually not as bad as my 2016. So in a couple of years, they had already made some upgraded interior refinements. Uh, but I can tell you with mine... From, from literally just getting in the car, it goes, burr, 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 you know, and it's not a big deal, but it just rubs right here, and it tends to drive me a little crazy anyways. Um, if you're an enthusiast, yeah, you know, it, it'll it'll wear you out a little bit. Um, but overall, like, it's this is still a phenomenal car. Uh, I always like the way the steering feels in sport mode. You can change that to comfort mode. It's very similar with the new vehicle. They've really got great enthusiast driving characteristics in really all their cars. Even if you just get a base Model 3, it still feels fun and sporty. But the Model X and the Model S for sure just have all that power and all that torque. And it just, it's fun to drive. Like people say, oh, it doesn't have an exhaust note. No, it's not a Porsche Flat 6, right? It's not a V12 Aston Martin like we have. But in the end of the day, it's still a lot of fun. It still feels like a fun, sporty and, uh, and, and a cool car to drive, right? Like Chris said, the future with the big windshield and everything. So this is still a fantastic buy. I think you can get one of these for, you know, $100,000, $110,000, $120,000 off MSRP, which is literally where they're at right now. Still under warranty. You know, you still have uh, the full, I think, eight-year unlimited mile warranty on this particular vehicle. So, yeah, I mean, you know, where do I sign? These cars are straight up ludicrously fast they really really are but i am so t today is not about how fast the p100d is because it's the last version of the plaid what i was actually most impressed by was how fast and i think chris would agree with me how fast the long range is how hard that thing launches when you go full throttle on that thing your passenger from the butt dyno point of view goes whoa you know it still gives you that fast like what this thing does what like that's crazy feeling and that was actually the thing i was number one surprised by it's probably the number one thing i was surprised by in the long range version i just assumed that yeah it's fast because it's a it's an electric car but i didn't really think it would have that like man this thing's really fast you know which it is i mean 3.8 to 60 still feels like a really good time uh, but nothing quite like the p100d now I have recently driven the Plaid, I drove a Model S, and guys, that thing the, is just ridiculous. Like, the torque vectoring of that vehicle is second to none. It's not necessarily that it has 1,020 horsepower, right? That's really not its parting trick. It's how it puts 1,020 horsepower to the ground. That is what matters. You see, I've driven 100 
plus 500, 600, 700 horsepower gas cars, you know, they thankfully do the channel mostly. And nothing, no internal combustion engine puts the power down like these electric motors can. And that is what makes them fast. It's that characteristic right now. Yeah, there's cars with more horsepower, but there's not vehicles out there, at least on the internal combustion engine side, that can put the kind of torque numbers down that these make and just make you, so like any anywhere, you just go like that and you're off to the freaking races. And I tell you what, like you do that in a thousand horsepower Mustang or even an Audi R8 of the world, right? It's still gonna struggle for traction. It's still gonna overload the tires. You're gonna lose time. And it just never has that immediate like wow factor that these cars have. So that's the one thing I wanna leave you with. I was just so surprised with how good the long range is when it comes to performance. Uh, that was something I wasn't expecting. Now beyond that, FSD, you can see they've redestyled the screen and the graphics a little bit different. He has this like Santa Clausy like uh, rainbow road graphic going on. I gotta figure out how to make mine like that because that's kind of cool. Mine's just a blue line. Is that something you've done specifically? Yeah, that's rainbow road mode. How do you put it in rainbow road it's, mode? It's in the uh, toy box. Well, that's fun. <laughs> you can also turn on Santa mode too, which- I have heard of Santa mode. Now Santa mode, you can actually just do the car, right? Turn on Santa mode. Opening Santa mode. There it, it is. is. Rainbow Road. Now I'm Santa Claus. Now it plays something, doesn't it? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes it'll play some music, yeah. Yeah, so that's Santa mode now. So again, now we're just FSDing in Santa Claus as Santa Claus. It's like, this is my point earlier, guys. There's so many little, like, I call them Easter eggs about a Tesla in, you know, if you're not like an intuitive person, you probably will uncover very few of them. But if you really do want to watch all these like YouTube videos like this, right? And <laughs> you probably didn't know there was Santa Claus mode, right? Or you probably didn't know that, oh my God, I can actually go in here and I can turn on farting on demand and all these little fun things that make the car different than every other manufacturer. And so what I've always been left with when I drive a Tesla is I get out of it and it just feels like Chris said earlier, the future. And it feels like there was some genius like an Elon Musk of the world who created it. And there's just nothing else that quite like it. I've reviewed the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. It is a better built car. I would probably say not necessarily better built than that car, the new long range, but in general, compared to this, it's a better built car. It's faster, it's more refined. But in the end of the day, it it's still more of a just good Porsche, but not a great EV. This just brings the self-driving and it brings a lot of the technology and the fun factor and what I call little X factors, right? It just brings things to the table that you're not gonna find in any other electronic vehicle manufacturer. And you could take that for what it's worth. I do like the turn socks, I kinda, I don't know, I, I don't know. This, this whole screen thing, I'm gonna get used to it, but, and it does have this thing called auto gear, which I'm like, what does that mean? So I haven't even tried that feature yet. So that's a perfect example of, I haven't even gotten through all the features of the car. But yeah, man, this is a great car, Chris. I mean, it's amazing what, how many miles? 92? It looks like it's 84. Oh, heck, 84. Wrong. So 84, but it still launches pretty damn hard. Yeah. And, and from your point of view, I know it feels way faster than from the driver, right? Like, oh, yeah. From your point of view, you're like, geez, it's just nuts. You surprised me. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the dual point of view uh, drive that we just did here. And, uh, you know, we wanted to throw a little bit of that on uh, with all the other talking points. You know, I wanted to do another supplementary little section for this video, guys, for FSD, because my dad and I have been riding together in this car now about an hour, and it's been on FSD the entire time. And I am telling you, this is some game-changing transformative technology. We have been on, I mean, Dad, show this, this map real quick. We have been on some serious back roads, like show this road, and it is navigating it better than the human that was in front of us 90% of the time. Like he was going all over the road, all over the lanes, right? In a big old, you know, Tundra truck. And then this car is perfect. And so I am just so blown away by how good FSD is. And it, it's at a point now in 2023 here in December where I truly believe that they're gonna solve autonomous driving. So I just think that once you get used to this, you know, 
it is to the point now where you literally can just relax and we're talking an hour and a half drive from A to B, like to from where you got out of your driveway to literally the destination and it navigates all of it. Stop signs, merging on highways, you know, red lights, uh, yield areas where it's like, you know, this guy could go or that guy could go. We almost had a truck pull out in front of us. The car noticed it, no problem. I am just blown away. And, I've, and there's nothing I could really say. It's just, this is a technology you're gonna have to do a demo drive with a car with FSD or, you know, come and meet somebody like myself who has one with FSD and just have them show you how, how good it is. And you just really gotta sit here and experience it. But it is, it is pretty amazing. I mean, this is a back road that I think very, very few humans could even drive successfully. And yet this car, which is probably never, like I doubt many people have even fsd these roads because we're so far out in the country. But yet, look, it just lost the center line because this road doesn't even have a center line. It's just basically a paved road in the middle of nowhere. And yet it's still able to figure out how to maneuver and position the car. Truly amazing technology, truly. Well, I want to thank you for watching. You know, Chris and I hope you learned something from this uh, video slash review, guys. Obviously, this is a new vehicle, and so I kind of wanted to throw some of the compare and contrast to the old vehicle. And it's really cool hearing Chris's point of view on his vehicle and kind of what's gone wrong. Not a lot of issues, guys, on either one of our vehicles. So I think it's safe to say for like thirty-five, forty-five, fifty thousand dollars. Getting a, a used P100D is a lot of value, especially considering it was $160,000. And frankly, and I know I'm just defending myself because I just bought this car, but I actually think at $80,000, there's a lot of car here. There's a lot of value here. I didn't think there was a lot of value at $115,000 when they initially came out with the restyled body. Now I do think it makes sense, especially when you factor in the $7,500 tax credit, if you can get delivery before the end of the year and transfer FSD, and you get to write it off. There's all these extra little incentives that have helped me make the financial decision and justify it to the wife. But overall, guys, Hope you enjoyed our point of view drive and launching this car versus this car. That was kind of fun to see. And you know, if you have any questions, go in the comments, ask them. I'll have Chris monitor it. So if you had something specific that you wanna share that's happened to your 16 Model S or Model X, right, that are in the same kind of category, you can share that with the community. I'm sure there's horror stories of FSD and you know all these different phantom braking and all that stuff that he didn't really cover. I can tell you that I've had very little of it with mine and I've probably done over 50,000 miles in autopilot. Now this being FSD, I'm gonna do an FSD only review soon. Probably not gonna be in this video because we've talked about a lot of other stuff, but that is coming. And I will tell you, FSD is very good. It is almost to the point now where it is full hands off. So I do think Tesla is gonna solve the Rover Taxi one day. I do think that they're gonna be licensing their FSD to other manufacturers one day. And it probably will just become the default standard for humanity when it comes to self-piloting around Earth. Now maybe there'll be somebody on Mars one day that has something different, but as far as Earth goes, I think these guys are gonna have it covered when it comes to full self-driving. So that's it for me guys, that's my personal thoughts. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, and we're almost at 10,000 subs and we need your help to get there. And uh, really happy we have the Driven HQ here and this is the second review we've shot in here now. So lots more coming, hopefully one a week from now on. Have a great Christmas. This might be the last review until Christmas. Happy New Year. Probably gonna do one more video for the end of the year, but definitely not before Christmas probably. So that's it for me guys. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next one.